Oh! <laughs> 
Suolo che le ciccio in vaso dai barbari e fiocchi. I nostri campi poteva stati fare se ne sì, e poi della pace vittoria, in preda a tutti, la marcia lo stuteme. E lo Un guerriero indomabile, però se qui condotto.
Pietà del mio soffrire, have pity gods on my suffering, Ida sings in a mournful sigh as her lover Artemis goes to lead an army against her own people, and she's torn between his love and the love of her native land. Now the curtain has fallen on the opening scene of Aida, and in a few moments will rise again to reveal the dim interior of the Temple of Vulcan, where Radames is invested with the sacred armor to lead the Egyptians against the Ethiopians. It's a very impressive ceremonial rite that takes place before the altar in this temple with its series of vast halls and a large statue of the god Ta down front. It's back to us in the audience, so that when the chorus sings to the god, they are also singing to us in the audience. To the accompaniment of the harp, we will hear the voice of the high priestess and the quiet chorus of priests and priestesses, and then there is a solemn mystic dance before the altar. Radames approaches the altar, and the high priest places a silver veil on his head and puts a sword in his hand. The scene ends as Radames repeats the prayer to the gods, and the whole assembly then suddenly breaks into a final shout of triumph to the great god Ta, the immense Ta. The only new voice in, in this scene will be that of Helen Vani as the priestess. Carlo Bergonzi sings Radames and Giorgio Todsi is our Ramphus. Our Radames today, Carlo Bergonzi, was born in Parma, the province which also gave us both Verdi and Toscanini. He started as a baritone, he's now a tenor as we hear him today. Now we'll have the temple scene.
Radames is vested with the consecrated armor in the temple of Vulcan. Preparatory to leaving for battle, the priests invoke the aid of the gods in protecting Egypt 
with their cry to the great god, Pa. Long for curtains open, here are the two principals, Carlo Bergonzi and Giorgio Dodgi. Greeting Fausto Cleva. We shall hear the short introduction to the second act, the first scene of the second act of this lovely heart chord, the apartment of Amneris in the palace.
Oh, 
the podium, he motions to the musicians in the orchestra to rise and accept this applause with him. In just a moment, we'll have the first theme of the fourth and final act of Aida.
Oh, <laughs> 
Archie. Elit Archie, say the high, says the high priest. He's silent. Rodney stands on his privilege to say nothing. He does not defend himself. I never tried in vain to have him renounce the Ethiopian slave girl Aida, save himself, but he refuses. And the despairing Amneris listens to the priests echoing the words, Rodney for traitor. Here are the three principals bowing. Irene Dallas in a long black robe, who did a very fine interpretation of Amneris in that scene. Mary Curtis Werner, Zaraida Carlo Bergonzi as Radames and Giorgio Tocci Rampus. Here is uh, Mr. Bergonzi and Miss Dallas. Miss Dallas, our Amneris today is a native of San Jose, California, and a graduate of Columbia University. She studied voice with Edith Walker and Paul Alhouse before winning a Fulbright Award, which provided for further training in Italy. Now the tomb scene. Oh, 
una larva, una visione, se no, per umane questa, è questa. Thank <laughs> you. 
Slowly the curtain closed. On the weeping Amneris, prostrate upon the stone which closed the tomb upon Rodimus, and also on Aida, who stole into the tomb to die with her lover. Amneris imploring with suffocating emotion, parche, parche, peace for the one whom she loved, but doomed to a living death because that love was not reciprocated. Here go the encore curtains. We have Mary Curtis Werner as Aida and Carlo Bergonzi as Radames. Bowing. Now we have Miss Dallas, Miss Curtis Werner, and Mr. Berger.